important things going on, but um, it's a noisy situation right now. Uh, what we do have going into tomorrow, uh, let me mute this. Uh, we should have you know, to the favorable side of sentiment. Uh, you got to put the call elevated. Uh, we'll see if that holds into the Fed. And what that tells us is that there's a lot of hedging uh, taking place going into this Fed meeting. Um, I don't want to make too big of a deal out of it. You do have a ton of earnings and the Fed. Uh, so obviously there would be an increase in protection, right? People looking to put on protection out there. Uh, but if you do, if we do get a setup where you have these elevated put the call favorable sentiment and then maybe gamma in the mix going into the Fed, you know, could be the ingredients for a really healthy squeeze coming out. All right. Or even if there's um, even if there's the weakness, any selling off the Fed, um, we'd be already on squeeze watch. Uh, so do we be looking for an opportunity uh, or into that weakness? Uh, one of the main issues we have, you probably heard me complaining about it all day long today, uh, is there's really no edge out of the flow. I, I'm not going to say no edge. There's very little edge out of the flow. Uh, there were a couple names today that caught some interesting action. Um, I try to post them a couple times so you guys could take a peek, even just to uh, keep an eye on them. You had uh, this. HZNP. Uh, which is a quality biotech, pretty decent biotech name, strong name. Actually, I got the uh, top bet list here. Let me. Hold on. Yeah, so a couple names to uh, keep an eye on. If we're still set up coming out of the Fed here, top bets. All right, so here's the action H HZMP, right? So you have some time, uh, Jan 110 calls. Again, you're not early in the name, uh, but this has been a, a healthy biotech. I remember when they were buying this thing a while back in the uh, 30s. It's a little slower of a mover, but a healthy biotech. Um, and biotechs may be a place to hide if this market gets a little frisky off this Chinese stuff. All right, we'll talk about that quickly because uh, in my opinion, I think that's the most in, important thing out there right now. I don't think the Delta variant, I don't think any of that stuff um, is as significant as what's going on in China. I think that's the reason why we've been seeing this global slowdown positioning um, over the last, what is it, a month now? At least a few weeks are taking place. I mean, China, basically what they're doing there, they're changing the rules. So in simple English, that's what it's come down to. They're changing sectors and industries of their markets um, because what it comes down to what they don't want they don't want their best companies leaving to come public and do business here you understand they want to keep them there and what that's the bulk that's not everything of what they're doing there but that's a lot of what they're doing over there they want to keep you can't blame them you can't blame them but what they're doing is from a free open market, even though they're communist, you know, that's been like China's been a capitalistic market. Um, you could, they're getting their hands involved now. And you can see like people, right? Kathy Wood, who usually sticks to her guns, is pulling the plug on basically as much China exposure as she can, she's getting out of. And you have a lot of people doing the same thing. All right, because you don't know if that's the uncertainty. You don't know what's next. Nobody does. Okay, so that can have not only spillover effects into other things. You know, I made the comment a couple of times yesterday. If this wasn't a rigged market, 
we'd already be in in the heat of a correction. I mean, this it, what's going on now in China, without a doubt in my mind, would have led to a correction in any other market we we were in. Okay, it has multiple times. Whether you know it's China or Japan or anything in Asia, usually leads to a, a pretty decent sized correction. So there's no doubt that this, in my opinion, would have. But what you do have the bullish case here is that because of what's going on there and the potential effect on a on globally on a slowdown that may keep the fed in check okay so ultimately the death of this bull market is going to be good news why because the fed takes their hand away from the controls of the game right the game's not rigged anymore Okay, so as the economy improves, as things get better, the Fed is going to unwind. I'm trying to think of the word, but the rigging that took place off of COVID. Okay, that Fed put little by little, they reel it in. So good news is what you worry about being the death of this bull trend. Um, So a lot of people are looking at this China situation. Yeah, short term you may have some volatility, but ultimately that means the Fed can't taper, okay? It's going to put the Fed on hold. And if you do have a slowdown, they may be on hold for a while, all right? And the other reason people are looking at it glass half full and through bullish lenses is that if all this money is leaving China, what market are they coming to? Where are they going to go? You know what I mean? Where are they going to go? So even though a global slowdown, you'll have some volatility, you have some selling, ultimately it's going to buy the dip here, right? All that money has got to go somewhere. They got nowhere else to go, guys. Nowhere else to go. All right. So you got that you got that tug of war going on right now. Okay. Again, if the Fed was already, you know, if the Fed wasn't involved in the way they are right now, we'd probably have you know, one of those corrections we usually used to have every three, six months, usually every six months, nine months, uh, we'd come down, correct 10, 15%, whatever it is, and um, it set up a new entry and a nice reset. Does it do it now? I highly doubt it. It's possible. Um, but it's more, we probably get some volatility uh, until we, we get some more information. Uh, the other thing too is seasonally, and I'm not a big seasonality guy, but seasonally, this is usually where all this shit starts to stir up. You know, going into August, you get things starting to get a little rocky, and then September, shit hits the fan, you know, and, and things can get out of hand. So this is what we have. This is what you have on a lot of investors and traders' minds right now as we go into a big Fed meeting this week, okay, uh, tomorrow or tomorrow's Wednesday already, all right? On top of that, you got gigantic earnings this week, all right? So we'll see the reaction. Forget about the numbers. We don't care about the numbers. We, we want to see how they react to these numbers. A lot of these names have already run into these numbers, right? So let's see how that goes. And then one more thing that I think is probably going to add a lot of chop into the mix this week, you got a lot of IPOs uh, coming this week and some big ones, right? So usually, okay, usually that at at the least adds a lot of choppiness because it takes away liquidity from other names, other stuff, right? To go into these IPOs. So you got a lot of forces at play here. Nothing that, you know, nothing looking ideal. You want to Stay tactical, play, stay quick. Uh, but let's see, come the end of the week, how things look. Uh, and we get through a big week of earnings to, to see how everything lines up. All right. Here are my two favorite bets uh, coming out of today. All right. And, you know, I really had no interest in this sector, but this bet is a good looking bet here. Steel Dynamics. All right. And... This name here, 
looks really interesting to me. We've been talking about this name, right? MDB. Now, the problem is you got two opposite sides of rotation. This is cyclical, even though Steele has been acting well here of late. Okay. So you have that cyclical commodity, higher rate play, and MDB, defensive tech, lower rate play. Okay. So two opposite sides. You, that, that may be, be a good thing. You know, you play both sides, but two opposite sides of the rotation theme that's been going on out there. Right. And Newcore, I'm glad you reminded me, Jay. Newcore caught some nice action yesterday. So Newcore and Steel Dynamics, they're like twin brothers. Okay. They both move together. Um, they, they're both Steel studs. Like if you're going to make a play on Steel, those are the two studs of the group. New core and steel dynamics. All right. So even though the flow was ugly today, you had some really interesting bets, right? Very isolated. Uh, but you had a biotech, could be a place to hide, a steel name, a defensive software tech name that actually we were looking at this this weekend is set up rather well, right? Let's see. Like that's not a bad look. For MDB. Apple out. Pop, fade, up, down, sideways, crooked. Right? Earnings call, conference call. What's this? How do they die? What's going on in China? Blah, blah, blah. And you get the verdict six hours from now. Yeah, the numbers they knew, the numbers were going to be good. They want to hear China. They want to hear this. They want to hear that. You know, all the other shit. Excuse my French. All right, so the MDB, keep an eye on it, especially if you like to play these names. You can even trade this name. It's a big mover. All right, caught uh, some interesting action there. HZMP, Steel Dynamics. And I wanted to talk about this name because I know I was going to get a lot of questions. ATVI, uh, you got that big lawsuit. Uh, you got the employees protesting. So you got a lot of shenanigans going on there. In incredible order flow today. They bombed February calls. Okay, but you got one big, big, big asterisk next to all that action. And that you got earnings next week. Okay? So I don't care how much buying came into it today. You have earnings next week. It's like it never happened to me, all that action. I'm being honest with you. You know, I'm not impressed at all because of earnings. Then. Now, if you didn't, you didn't have earnings, right? It's post earnings or earnings are further out, doesn't catch earnings. You know, yeah, you get, you get my attention off that type of line. But earnings less than a week away could be stock replacement. It could be a million different things going on. So that's my feeling on ATVI. All right, not even my favorite action of the bunch today. Um, Steel Dynamics, MDB, HZMP, Adobe. This was a nice bet, Adobe. You want to look at this chart? Look at this. What are we going to do with this chart? What are we going to do with this chart, guys? Are we early here? God almighty. What are we going to do with this? You know, said it. <laughs> yeah. So again, not my cup of tea. Some of you like to at least trade these names. They're strong, right? Some of these stronger names stay strong for a bit. Uh, so you had a cute sweep into weakness there. So you may be looking for a snapback or something like that. But we're not early there. We're not early. And, and this is another one we're not early. When's the last time you pull up a chart in Crocs? Look at this name. That order came in today in the steam room, in the chat, and all I think all of our drawers dropped to the ground. It's like we all pulled up the chart at once. We were like, wait a second. Crocs is 130 bucks? When the hell did that happen? Justin Bieber effect. Unreal. 
Yeah, I remember this stock back in the day, even before the COVID hit. It came back once before it was ready to go under. And then COVID hit, they almost went under a second time over here. And now look at her go. So, yeah, these names, Dak, exactly. These names are powerhouses right now. Look at this. You know, they're powerhouses. So this Crocs caught um, a good-looking bet with time. December 140s, almost a half a million dollars. You know, I, I don't know, Martin. I, I don't know, like, are the numbers there on these names? You know what I mean? Are the fundamentals there? I can't say it's a bubble. Maybe they're printing their own money. You know, like, there's a name here. Like, I heard the same thing about this name, Bubble. But if you look at the... Their numbers, GNRC, you know, their numbers are ridiculous. How much money they're making. Ridiculous. Insane growth and profitable. You're not, you're not talking about losing money. You know what I mean? You're talking about earning $2 a quarter up 200%. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I haven't been following these names, Crocs. I mean, are they making money? I don't know. Let me see. Look, they're profitable. You know, maybe trading at a big multiple right now, but profitable name. So they just have crazy growth, you know, crazy growth. All right, so that's names um, of interest to keep an eye on. One more thing I wanted to tell you today, and then we'll, we'll open it up to some questions. Uh, Chewy new outperform rating at Baird. Chewy caught a little bit of action today. New outperform rating. Uh, this is what I wanted to share with you guys here. The client flow came out late last night. And here's what it looks like. Hang on. Buybacks galore, okay? So you got buybacks that are going to become buying every dip in this market. I should have posted this ahead of time here, but I'll get you guys to look at it while I'm posting. Where'd it go? All right, so this is what it looks like. The problem uh, with the client flow this week, there was a little confusion between what they were doing in ETFs and what they were doing in individual names. Um, so here, if you look at sector flows, okay, financials, so the largest inflows, so they're buying the financials. And look what they're doing here again in individual names. All right. So they continue to sell the growth side of individual names. Okay. And I, I'm not going to say it. they're not plowing into um, the cyclicals and commodities, materials, and financials, they've been pulling away from them a little bit. This week, the financials got a bump. Um, but I think the key takeaway is that they're not showing much interest to the growth side. I think that's the main takeaway uh, for us. All right, ETF flows, value ETF soar outflow. So you see what I mean? They're pulling money a little bit of money out of the value ETFs and putting some money into the growth ETFs, okay? Not at a drastic pace or size, all right? But there's a little of it going on. So there's no real standout to me. There's no all sides here. You know what I mean? There was, and I think little by little, it's been, 
they've been taking it away. The only thing I see here is, like I said, in individual names, tech and commercial services, which is growth, uh, they want nothing to do in individual names. This is, this is basically just everybody uh, there, Tree. No dumb, no smart. Everybody lumped in to one basket. So you look for um, extremes where everybody is in agreement. You know what I mean? So like we saw, right, they all were selling tech aggressively a month ago. That was a signal of, being, of all sides positioning, right? They were all in agreement. So that, that's the way I look at it anyway. Um, but it tells you what some, like the individual clients were doing. Retail and hedge fund clients both bought stocks last week. Uh, I think institutions were sellers. Yeah, see, net sellers. And uh, buybacks are really starting to pick up. This is from um, Bank of America every week. every week all right so we were looking to see if anything would uh would stick out here i got a couple of charts i could i'm gonna show you guys after we get done with here too those of you who are members um but no no real standout again the only thing that my main takeaway is uh not as much interest in this growth side where that's where the market the price action, that's where everything's been, right? Usually the, the player out there, the investor, the trader out there, the price action forces sentiment, right? That's usually how it works. It really hasn't here, you know? It really hasn't here. They haven't bit into the growth side of this market. And what that means is, like we were been talking about, guys, if for whatever reason, there is further catalyst to the growth side. There's a lot of buying that would, would have to come in. You know what I mean? That's, that's what it ultimately means. You know, it doesn't have to happen, but if, like, if rates stay low, you know, um, if cyclicals still don't look appealing and they need to find a home for that money, there's a lot of buying that can come into growth, you know? And, you know, Hussein, you, it's funny you mention that because the buyback, I think, is like the wild card here. Why, you know, that's why I think a lot of people don't hate the banks here. You got, you know, you got that, buy, that buyback in your back pocket, no? That's, I mean, that's that added bonus. So... Shop down almost 2% off mixed shelf. Shop mixed shelf. Yeah, the banks, the banks look good. You know, the banks look good. But the problem with the banks, I think, is if they're crowded trade and rates, if the trend we're seeing right now continues, you have a lot of people caught long these banks. You know what I mean? That's a lot of selling. Potentially a lot of supply that can come in. I think the real story is China. I really do, Nate. Remember, like I was saying, I, I made the, the call Delta variant or this or that. I, I was being honest. I, I, I really couldn't even guess. But I think it's... I was thinking it's China, and now I really think it's China. I think it's China potentially leading to global slowdown. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yep, Mike, and, you know, I don't think, again, because of the rig game we're in, and guys, I'm not one of those people you guys know me, I don't say rig game in a bad way like some of these perma bears. You know, I, I'm totally fine with a rig game as long as you admit to it and re react accordingly, all right? Um, but we are in a rig game, okay? And people look at the glass half full. Otherwise, you know, this is simple math. 
that ultimately this leads to a slowdown of the global economy. You know what I mean? There's no, uh, and I think the market would be the first to start factoring that in. It, it's not that difficult for the, the market reacts ahead of time. But like I said, you have that tug of war, okay? And that's what's gonna create some volatility where global slowdown, no taper. Global slowdown, no taper. You know what I mean? Like I know bulls, okay, I know bulls that we're done with this market because they thought that it was good news and that's usually the end of this setup, okay? Now, because of this, this is the added wall of worry that may keep the Fed engaged. And bulls are now, okay, wait, maybe the music still goes here. You understand the negative that came in here to play ultimately may be a bullish thing. So oh, we gotta we gotta see how um, how things play out. And interestingly enough, you got a Fed meeting tomorrow, and let's see. You know, a lot of people think it's a, a nothing burger tomorrow. I think a lot of people are going to be interested to see if he goes about his business the same way the last few weeks that tapering is in discussion. We're more concerned. We got an eye on inflation, even though it's transitory, or does he start talking about the Delta variant, China, and some risk out there? Because if they start talking about some risk, you know, they're not going anywhere. And you know what's funny about that, too? If you guys remember, remember Powell, the last go around when he started to tighten raise rates in the face of a trade war with China, with Trump? And it bit him in the ass, remember? So he learned from that. You know, that's definitely in the back of his mind. Yeah, a complete mess. So you know that he, he's learned from that. I remember even Yellen went through something like that initially, and she learned from that, and that was it, you know? She never played games ever again after that. So it's going to, we'll see, we'll see tomorrow. Tomorrow should be interesting. It should be interesting. But if you guys remember, we were talking about the market and, and a lot of the underbelly of the market had that 2018 feel to it. Remember we were talking about that? And, and that's why it had that 2018 feel. It's, kind of, it's a similar situation that's on the doorstep here, you know? Like you had the trade war there, and now you have China back in the fold. And like, look, look at this. This is, um, you're not too far away from COVID lows here. Look at that. Right? Like you're, you're talking about, this is a, is this a, uh, what do we call this? Is this crash like yet? This is a crash, no? Hong Kong? Gotta be a crash. Yeah, I, I think if he starts talking about the risk again, Sam, I think that people are going to interpret it like, oh, shit, you know, taper just went out the window. He's more concerned about, you know, what's going on. Yeah, Hong Kong. What was that? What's the symbol on trading? View? HSI. Look at this. Look at it. It was down like 5% yesterday. Yeah, you got to, this is a crash, man. This is a crash going on there. And our market, we're at new highs. Like, we, come on. We, it's not a rig game. I don't care what anybody tells me. The way things are tied globally this day and age, if this would be going on in the, in the China markets, you're telling me this our market wouldn't get hit? Oh, my God. Come on. No question. No question. 
You know, I told you guys 1998. Now that's a long time ago. But because Japan went through something like this, I went through the worst correction. I, I, I'm telling you, there were, there were not too many scarier corrections in 98. The Asian contagion. People were shitting out the uh, blood after that. That's pretty gross, but you know what I mean. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. It was So this is, I think, my, honestly, maybe I'm over-exaggerating. I, in my opinion, I think this is worse. Because you had, like, China, think about the growth there, opening up their markets. You know, you had crazy growth opportunities in China. Now they get, they're putting their hand in the cookie jar? Uh <laughs> That's people's worst nightmare. Yeah, yeah, you know, so we we want to be a little careful here, even, you know, the game is rigged, et cetera, but you got to make sure Powell participates in the right way, you know, because this, like I said, not many people, they know like something's going on in China, but they don't know that this is going on right now in Asia. You know, you got to crash there right now. So, and here's my question too. You got maybe you guys know because I, I thought the last time we'd see a little more and we didn't. What about funds that own these things? Right? Do they? Uh, you telling me there's not going to be any body bags coming out of this? There's got to be bodies. No. You, where are all the, you know how many growth funds own all these China names? Now, maybe somebody made a good point today that this has lingered a little bit. Maybe they've been selling, right? Maybe they've been trimming. But now you got, you know, you got some studs that are getting tattooed. You know what I mean? These aren't the Fugazi companies of China. These are supposedly the legit stuff here. JD, Billy. You know, the top growth companies of China, right? Baidu. A lot of people, a lot of people own these things. Ten cent, exactly. Ten cent. Holy cow. I forgot about that. Look at this. So we gotta see how this plays out, guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, like those names, fish, I think. There was enough time that people, yeah, not as many trapped longs in these names. You know, you know what I mean? Like we've been staring at the trouble in these names for a while. But, you know, there was a lot of dip buying. A lot of people that believed in, in the China story, even longer term, um, that are buying 10 cent. And like Kathy Wood, like she's hanging up the cleats in China. She's done with it. Like, she wants nothing to do with it right now. I mean, right now, I'm, I'm in a big cash position, honestly. But I've been in a cash position for a while here, and it hasn't been the best of moves. It's just been individual names have been really tough, you know, have been really tough. Like it's hard for me to uh, get really excited about anything on the on the position side. I mean, big tech. The problem with big tech, I think, is that they've moved. I think ultimately the better opportunity, and we've been saying this now, they move too, but we got to watch them on pullbacks. The underbelly of growth, right? So if because here's what's going to happen. If this China stuff does spill over and create more volatility in our market, when the dust settles, they're going to, people are going to be looking for, especially on the tech side, companies that don't have ties to China. You understand? Companies that don't have as much global exposure. And that's a lot of underbelly growth. You know, that's a lot of underbelly growth. So that's why we got to keep our, our eyes peeled. But 
you know, like we've been saying, these names, right? Like Roku, we've been talking about this name a while, okay? And you don't think I wish I had a position and, and still owned it? I mean, we were looking over here. But there's going to be a lot of noise in these things. You know what I mean? It's not going to be a smooth ride. Like, it's easier said than done. Oh, just buy some Roku and, and hold it. If you want to own a position in this thing with a little bit of time, you know, there's going to be multiple shakeouts. Multiple. So it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. That's why the best, I still think the best approach is to try to be quick and take this market on a day-to-day -day basis, like we were talking about Sunday, right? So we, let's say we come in after the Fed, right? We have favorable sentiment. Things are lined up. All right, let's see where the flow is going. Flow is going into the Roku's of the world. You know, let's buy some of that stuff off a of pullback. You understand? And try to make some money. But, you know, will that be there a week from now? That's not an easy question to answer. You might be, those stocks might run and you might be right back to where you started, you know, a week later. So that's the problem, you know? That's the problem. Like this here, right? Like this looked good, okay? This can easily... You know how this thing moves, MDB? Whew. This thing could come down. It's it's 360. It closed at. This thing could come down to 340 tomorrow. Tomorrow could it come down to 340. And it doesn't, doesn't make a difference in this stock. You know? It doesn't make a difference. Because then the next two days after that, it can bounce 30. But that's... The issue, you know, who the hell wants to buy an MDB right here for a position swing and sit through down 2030? Who the hell wants to do that right now? That's the tough part, man. Yeah, me either. Me either. Otherwise, you know, this is a name I like. You know, but, you know, shit hits the fan. It can kick it in reverse with everything else, no doubt about it. You know, so that's the tricky part. For me, it's easier, like I just mentioned, right? Let's say we get through the Fed even early next week. We got the market went through some selling. We have some favorable sentiment. All of a sudden, some flow starts to come into these names Monday morning. We find an entry off a pullback and we got some momentum for a cushion, you know? And then we don't even have to overstay our welcome. You can you sell these things. You guys have been doing it. You can sell these things pretty quick. You know, if, you, if you're patient enough and nab them at the right spot. Yeah, like the Fed, the Fed put is still in play here. And I think the, you know, that, that's why this, guys. That's why I just showed you these overseas charts, I mean, look, like nothing happened. Like nothing's going on in the world. Look at this. It's pretty amazing, right? Like if I was to tell you, think about this. If I was to tell you, honestly, right, pre-COVID, before all shit hit the fan, that China would be in basically almost crash and you had a choice to own the S&P 500 or not. There was no way you would want to be long the S&P 500. There is no way. Right? There's no way. And this thing's at new highs. Skipping along. Amazon, I think Amazon's fine. I just, you had big moves in these things, you know? It actually looks pretty good. It actually looks pretty good. You have a little breather here now. Yeah. See, but I, got, I know the way a lot of you think, like you, you want to find an entry Amazon here and you want to catch the big one. It's, it's tough right now to try to catch that, you know? 
I think you try to buy this thing off little pullbacks and trade it. I think that's the, the better way to approach it. You know, sitting comfortably in a position to try to catch that big reward. Yeah, Nate, that's, that's honestly, that's what I've been doing. I don't feel comfortable doing much else. You know, I've been really quick, both on both sides, you know, stopping myself out and taking profits. Uh, I try to be more selective at spots, you know, and I want to chase late in rallies. And I got a, you know, a lot of cash. I've been in a lot of cash. You know, I've been in a lot of cash. So, you know, I'm holding trip, which is a loser. I mean, there's nothing I can do about that at this point. But, you know, this, this told you the whole story here, right? This sh should have stopped right here. Right? Which it did. Had a little rally. But once it did this, and there were no buyers to be found, you know, and it wasn't the only one that did it. You know, like I said, every cyclical did that. Every one. So, you know, th that's the risk in this market. You get caught on the wrong side of things. Uh, the $14 million bet in Amazon June 14th, playing the run into Prime Day. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, you know, you had a lot of nice setups. Um, Back then, when was that? June fourteenth. Yeah, you know that. That's where the rotation just started happening. You had a lot of better setups across the board in growth and tech. You know, even the names we just talked about, like where Roku was there. Roku, that's where the spot was, right? Yeah, look at this. That was the spot in Roku. You know, all those names, Bill. Right, that was the spot. Now these things are high, uh, higher than a lot higher. Now, <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. Uh, the flow's horrible. The flow's been horrible, but it's expected the flow to be horrible. You know, you got earnings protection, you got stock replacement, you got the Fed. You got too many things for our uh, flow to be clean. Yeah, look at today, right? This is usually we are salivating at the mouth for day trading purposes. Um, a setup like today, right, where we get bullish sentiment signals, right, and you play for a squeeze, but. The sweeper activity usually tips us off, you know, when this turn's going to come, right? That's our heads up. Okay, here comes the momentum. There's no edge from sweeper activity. Every time there was a call buyer, there were three put buyers right behind it. Yeah, Tesla had a nice little scoot or some action. Off the lows, little call buying put seller. Oh, here's another name. Caught more spec flow today, uh, but that has been seeing interest, right? TTD, another uh, growth stud. Looks good too. All these names, they're just volatile, you know? They can move around. So ideally, you want to try to catch these things off some weakness. It helps. MGNI is more speculative. So that's a, a level down. They haven't really like Fubo. You know what I mean? This is more speculative. That's the problem. You. You know, these are names trading at higher multiples aren't profitable yet. No profits in sight. They're more, more spec. And right now, spec seeing no interest. You know, these are the, the studs of growth. Twilio, these guys.
So these are the names that they're going to buy first. When, when, they, when this group gets hot, then they'll go into the spec names. You know, when you see Twilio and all these names really start to move, you'll see the flow start to spill over into the, uh, the next level names. But these, these are the names to look at right now if you're interested in this group. Off, again, off dips, try to get them off dips because this happened already. You know what I mean? But they all still look good. Like this is healthy uh, breather here too, look. And you guys know some of the names, Crowd, ZS, right? Yeah, that honestly it took me a little by surprise that they're buying steel, you know? But what the hell do I know? You know, because what, what could happen? I don't know. I don't know. Infrastructure or even worse, stagflation, which is even worse. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's exactly what we have right now. Stagflation. You're 100% right. Yeah, even these names, they're looking good. You know, they're looking okay. They're hanging in there. Alcoa, right, caught some action into the lows, nice bounce. You know, what they do from here now is a little tougher question. But they do. They look okay. But, yeah, it caught me by surprise. New core, I actually played it yesterday for a day trade. It was up a little bit again today. And this STLD, this action was further out, though, February. So a lot of time behind it. But this looks good, too. CLF, that's another one. You know, but here, guys, the thing is, is these things we don't know yet. You know, they look good, but we don't know if these things, they could, they could do this for a while. You know, they could be stuck. That's the risk. You know what I mean? That's the risk in these things. Like MCX, what it's been doing. You see? Like people were looking to buy dips and thinking FCX was going to go right back to new highs here, 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 here. You know, it just might be in this consolidation here for a bit because there was too many longs on the way up. You know, that's the problem. This, look, you had a lot of people in here. I don't know. Is that is, what's going on with that infrastructure? Are they doing anything? I don't know what they. This government can't do jack shit. Yeah, maybe they need some uh, market weakness to hang some money out again. You know. Now let me ask you: Do these names? Because this is what started the selling in these commodities. You telling me these names don't get affected by China? You know, how could they not? Or maybe inflation is the bigger force, the larger force at play? I know, Julian, I know. You're right. There's more than what we think, right? Yep, I agree, Nate. Because, yeah, that's why. Because yields, you know? Crazy. I can't get over these yields. I really can't. But anyway, guys, listen, okay? We can rack our brains and, and handicap till we turn purple in the face. One thing you don't need to be any market aficionado to know, you know, it's not the ideal risk reward out there right now. You know what I mean? There's a lot of a lot of overhead risk. You know, and, and here's another thing that concerns me a bit. You know, I really I feel a lot better if they get washed out, okay? Especially with what's going on in China. 
These are hedge funds. Like we, we want this uh, crash, China crash, shit hit the fan with, with these guys long? I'd rather not. This is hedge fund exposure. Yeah, you know, let's. I want to see these guys get shaken out. Like, you get these guys back down to here, and I'll feel a hell of a lot better about things. I really would, because I'm not kidding. Days like today, it's probably these guys selling. Let's see now the next update. We'll probably see this tick, see this thing tick down. You know, when you see this price action like we saw today, you know, they're taking some risk off the table. So I'd rather see them get shaken out sooner than later. Yeah, and, and Julian, it's been taking place. Like, don't let this fool you, okay? Don't let this rigged index fool you, okay? Because the market looks more, honestly, at best like this, like the IWM chart. That's what it feels like at best, right? You got some pockets of strength in tech and in growth. Right? But you also have half the market that's been in a correction. Yeah, you got a lot of damage out there. Right? You see the equal weight chart, Tony? Right? That tells you everything you need to know. What's the what's the symbol on uh on trading view? The RSP, that's right. Take a look, right? This is what, what this market feels like. Right? Half the market has been a shit show, and you got half the market that tech and stuff like that. But, you know, this is chop, right? And what makes it even more difficult for us is like if you're on the wrong side of rotation, Again, example trip or example any commodity play or uh, caterpillar or cyclical play over the last month. It feels like the market's in a correction. Forget about it. chop. You know, if you're on the wrong side of rotation, and it's not that hard to be caught on the wrong side of rotation no matter what you do. Because if, if you're holding a swing trade, unless you're going to sell that Take those profits off the table as soon as you get them. If you're holding for more, your odds go up that you may get stuck on the other side. You know what I mean? Because this rotation is aggressive. So let's see. Let's see again. We got earnings. Another excuse to chill out. You got the Fed. Relax. You know, relax. Maybe we can catch, um, maybe we can have a squeeze lineup on the S&P 500 here. Hopefully after the Fed. I'd rather after the Fed, which is tomorrow, by the way. You know, maybe we can catch something like that, but I wouldn't go crazy doing anything here. There's no reason to. It'll get better. I promise. It may need a pullback for it to get better, but there will be a better time. It's a real pain in the ass right now. It always gets better. You're 100% right. This market's not going anywhere. You know, and if we do get lucky, guys, and we get some sort of pull off this China thing, like if it turns into even the smallest of pulls, you know, it opens up at least the next couple of weeks where we can make some money. Yeah, there's, and there's a lot of noise tree out there. There's so much noise out there, you know, so much noise. So she's right. You, you got to seriously, you got to block out everything right now. Take it easy. It's summertime. Put on your floaties. Go swim around your pool a little bit. Chill. You know, chill. All right, guys. 
Thanks for coming by. Enjoy the rest of the night. Tomorrow you got Mr. Powell. Have a good one, everybody.